be him. Now here in the book of Jeremiah, he's what we call one of the Old Testament prophets. And that a prophet was somebody that God chose and called and ordained them and they preached and warned and predicted the future. So there's a lot of prophecy. and That's why they call them prophets. Here in this uh, scripture this morning, in Jeremiah chapter 8, he's, uh, the Lord is talking to Israel, Judah, and the kings there, and he's, he's beginning to talk to Jerusalem, being backslid. And uh, he's asking, verse 5, why uh, that Jerusalem had backslid, as they did. And look at verse 6 this morning. Jeremiah 8, 6. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. God returned, talking about people. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Now, verse 7, Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle... And the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Back in verse 6, he said, um, he said when, I, when I, I talk to these people, and I talk to these people, and I talk to them, to, and like, like we would say, we talk to them as blue in the face. He said, I warned them, and I told them, and I warned them, and I told them, and he said, none of them stopped and said, what have I done? I better repent and get right with God. He said, none of them said that. I want to use that question this morning. And the title of the message is, Questions We Never Ask. Questions We Never Ask. As, as you get older, you begin to ask yourself these questions. Young people very seldom do. If young people could ever listen to older folks and believe them, they'd be a lot better off. Because the older you get, the more you start asking yourself questions that most people never ask. I don't preach about questions we never ask. But you're going to one day. One day when you start realizing that you're going to die and you're going to leave this world, you think about laying on your deathbed, you're going to think, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Many people this morning are out there living wild, not even out of bed yet, here at 11.30 in the morning, and will wake up today, go do whatever they want to do, do the same thing again tonight, do the same thing again tomorrow, and never ask, what have I done? I want to divide up these important things this morning and ask that question, what have I done? And you'll ask yourself this one day, Take it from me, friend. You'll ask yourself these questions one day. Question number one, questions we never ask, is what have I done with Jesus Christ? Not uh, what have I done about uh, religion, but what have I done about the Lord Jesus Christ? The most important question you will ever be asked or you will ever answer is what have you done with the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, there's four men in the Bible that done something different with Jesus, and you fit into one of these categories. Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. Pilate tried to wash him off his hands. And the centurion believed on him. You're in one of them four categories this morning. I'm glad when I was 18 years old that I believed on him. You know what I've done with Jesus Christ this morning? I have accepted Him as my payment for all of my sins, past, present, and future. He is my Savior. That's why we say He's our Savior. That's why we put up there, Jesus is the answer to all your problems. Did you realize this morning that your eternal destiny and your eternal fate and your eternal future depends upon what you have done with Jesus Christ. What will you do and have you done with Jesus Christ? Let me ask you a question. Has there ever come a point in your life where you realize I'm a sinner 
I'm, I'm no good. I'm going to hell if I don't do something. I can't be good enough myself. God, I need a Savior, and I'll take Jesus as my Savior. Amen? That's what I hope you've done with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's been all kinds of people in this world that didn't affect it too much. You take old Socrates and, and uh, Plato and Aristotle. As the old country preacher said, he said, them old Greek philosophers, they ain't helped us much. Uh, Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. Uh, uh, but that, that's true. Uh, you know what? Uh, them, them, them guys didn't help the world. They never answered the questions of where do you go when you die. They never did just give you some rehab, anything they got true, they got it in the Old Testament. And they never come up with nothing new that is worth, worth listening to. Uh, Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, all other religious leaders in this world, they've all died. They're all gone. They're all buried. But only the death of the burial, and the resurrection of one man, the Lord Jesus Christ, will save you and set you free. We were singing a while ago and cancel the penalty of death and sin this morning. I'm telling you, there's nobody in the world like Jesus. There's never been nobody like him. There'll never be nobody else like him. That's why they cuss him in Hollywood. That's why they use his name as a cuss word in the movies. I'm telling you, the great question is, what have I done? With the Lord Jesus Christ, I hope that you've accepted Him. I'll never forget the night that I got saved. The night I got saved, I knew that I was lost. I knew. I didn't know what to say. I was sitting back there on this side near the end, edge of the seat. My, my cousin was sitting on this side. Uh, the girl was sitting, sitting here on this side. This girl, girl turned around in, fr in front of me. She said, Danny, why don't you go get saved? And I'm telling you, my heart, I thought I was going to die. I was going to boom, 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 boom. I'd never felt like that, ever. I didn't know what real conviction was. And I said, uh, I said, uh, it's not my time to get saved. I know what to say. I didn't, I didn't know what to say. I said, it's not my time. I thought, I don't know. I thought maybe when it was your time, you'd hear somebody playing on a harp or a voice would speak from heaven and uh, the bell in the shape. But it didn't. But I'm telling you what, buddy, I tore all two pieces way down in here. And all, and, uh, and the devil said, if you go up there, all these people's going to look at you. And the, the Lord said on the other shoulder, said, if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell one of these days. And the devil said, uh, are you sure you're going to, you don't want to do this? And the Lord said, um, it don't matter what people think, Danny. You want to go to heaven when you die? And the devil said, people will think you're crazy. And, uh, and the Lord said, does it really matter what they think? I mean, it was a battle, battle, back and forth, back and forth like that. About that time, my cousin looked at me. He said, let's go get saved. And I, oh, Lord, that made it worse. I, I said, I ain't ready to get saved. Eh, no, I'm, I ain't going to. And he just stood there. Finally, in a few minutes, I, something got a hold of me. I like that old song that said, I went there to fight. But, oh, my, that night, something got a hold of me. And I punched him and said, let's go. And he took off and I took off. And I went down the all of that night. As the old song said, I, 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 he found a beggar and I found a king. I, I got the best end of that deal, I'm telling you. Hey, I went down a sinner and got up saved. I went down on my way to hell and got up on my way to heaven. Now, I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you done that? What have I done with the Lord Jesus Christ? You're going to ask yourself that question one day. What have I done with Jesus? When you stand one day before God, that'll be the question. That'll be the question. What have you done with Jesus, which is called Christ? But I'm going to move quickly this morning. Ask you another question. You'll ask yourself one day, what have I done with the Bible? What have you done with your Bible? Ladies and gentlemen, the ignorance of the Bible among Christian people in America is absolutely unreal and astounding. People are willingly ignorant of the wisdom and the wealth that's in the world's greatest book. This book right here has seen the birth of all the other books and it'll see the grave of all the rest of them. His Word will not ever die, will not ever return void, and I'm going to ask you, what have you done with the Bible? Have you, take, have you took time to read the Bible? We have all kinds of stuff nowadays, but let me ask you the question is, what have you done with the Bible? You know what Abraham Lincoln said? Our president was president. Abraham Lincoln said, quote, I believe that the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. The president said that. 
Do you think our president now, or her who is soon to come, God help us, believes that the Bible is the best gift God's ever given to man? They won't even respect it and call it the Holy Bible. Abraham Lincoln said the Bible is the best gift God's ever given to man. And I'm telling you this morning, the greatest thing you've got in your house is that book right there. You're going to need that thing one of these days. You need it now. I, it just blows my mind that uh, when you talk... Well, I listen to people talk. Sometimes I'm in a restaurant or something, and they say, have you seen this movie? Have you seen it? It just came out. I can't wait till it comes out. I'm going to go see it twice the first night, and then I'm going to get it on DVR and, and DVD, and then we're going to watch it over and over and over, and we're going to watch it. They know everyone. I, say, I love that part where he's coming down that hill in that car, and then and the cops, oh, I just love that part. We rewind that and watch it over and over and over again. And I love that part. And have you seen, the, have you seen that? YouTube video. Have you seen that YouTube video uh, where the where the dog comes in and he barks and he, he scares the cat and the cat jumps on the bald headed man and the bald headed man screams and mom throws throw the baby milk down the baby cries and the cat licks out so funny. Have you seen they know everything about everybody. They know everything about them stupid Kardashians are doing. They know everything about what athletes are doing. They watch them Olympics till they're red eyed this morning and they're sitting there and don't even know what the fifth book in the Bible is. What have you done with the Bible, people? What have you done with your Bible? You can read the entire Bible at normal speed, pulpit reading speed, at 70 hours, and most people spend that much time on social media in two weeks. You could read your whole Bible for the time you're spending on the phone and computer in three weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, what have I done with the Bible? What have I done? John Quincy Adams said, read, I read the Bible through every year. You read four or five chapters a day, you can read it through every year. George Mueller read the Bible through 100 times on his knees. He said, I look on a day like a lost day if I hadn't had a good time in the Word of God. You want me to tell you what's wrong with some of you people this morning? You know why you're in, you're in the shape you're in? You leave that thing laying in the, in the back of the... Uh, you know what they say? The Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to a person who's not. And you see a Bible nobody ever uses, your life's falling apart. You've got to get in this book. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I ain't fussing. I'm telling you... Maybe a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, my, uh, my, uh, my, flesh, my flesh resists it too. My, I'd a whole lot rather watch a funny YouTube video uh, than to read white paper with black letters on them. But I'm telling you, that's food for your soul. You've got to have the Word of God in you. By the way, you'll answer for what this book says one day, too. You'll answer for what this Do you know what it says? Can you stand up right now and give me a couple of verses on, on uh, exercise and sports? Can you stand up right now and give me a, a couple of verses about politics? Can you stand up about world leaders? Can you stand up and show me in the Bible where the second coming of Christ is? Well, why not? You know every spot of them movies. You know somebody's number and what position they play and how much money they made in their last contract. What have you done with the Bible, people? Make sure you read the Bible. Number three, what have I done with the church? What have I done with the church? i tell you what you need to do. You need to join it, support it, and get your lives tied to a local church of individuals. Amen? Your kids' friends go to church. Your, your, your kids' best friends ought to be the kids they go to church with. They grow up, uh, they got the best shot of turning out right, of keeping them in a good Bible-believing local church. You don't just hop and go wherever you feel led on Sunday morning. You become a part of a good Bible-preaching, Bible-believing church. I believe that. I believe that. Now, there is a strong movement going on. These, some of these nut preachers on the Internet uh, getting on there and preaching against going, having a church building. They are against church buildings. And the reason they're against them is because a lot of people's misused them, which they have, and a lot of people's turned them into monuments, which they have, but they're, they're against them. And they're saying uh, in, the New, in, the, in the New Testament they didn't have church buildings. True. And they're saying there's no Scripture authorizing you to build a church building. True. That's very true. Uh, there is also no Scripture authorizing you to have an Internet ministry and keep that going all the time. Right? True. 
I mean, you, they, they ain't got no sense. They're, they're jealous and backslid and, and everything else. There's nothing wrong with having a building together where God's people meet together and preach and pray. As a matter of fact, if you just have church in your home, it, ain't, it probably is be a good while before you'll hear somebody get up and preach a hard sermon on pride or jealousy or not witnessing or being lazy. Y'all heard the lazy sermon I preached? Or are you too lazy to get it on there and listen to it? Uh, listen, I mean, there's people from everywhere. One lady put on there, she said, Pray for me! This is me, I'm lazy. Uh, we knocked on doors yesterday. Girl, uh, le- 12 o'clock in the day, we knocked on the door. Me and, me and this guy here and some other guy came down from up, up here to come visiting with us yesterday from down in uh, somewhere, down yonder in Pice Morsel to see how we do it on Saturday. We went and knocked on this door. Uh, this girl came to the door like this, 12 o'clock. I said, look how pretty a day it is out here. She says, it's all dark in there. I said, where's the rest of them? They ain't up yet. It's 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. The Lord have mercy on you. If you can't get out of bed till 10 and 11. Listen, I'd stay up all night and can't sleep till 12 o'clock. I said, what'd y'all do all night? She said, watch movies. Movies. And it watched the same one over and over and over. I said, did you know God lets it get dark for a reason? You know why God lets it get dark? So you can go to sleep. Light won't be shining in your eyes. And nothing, nothing ever past 11.30 at night any good for you. Everything bad, unless you're staying up at a prayer meeting or driving to get home somewhere or having to work. Can't you agree this morning, every dirty bit of trouble you ever got in your life, wasn't it, past 11 o'clock at night? Amen. Yeah, you ain't as dumb as you try to sit there and look so innocent. Uh, I'm going to tell you, brother, this morning, what have you done with the church? Get up and go to church. You know why a lot of them bus kids ain't here this morning? Uh, uh, Kelly went to a house yesterday. Mama comes to the door just shaking like this right here. On drugs so bad, didn't even know where she's at, what her kids was doing. Now, I'm telling you, you're going to answer. You're going to answer for going to church. You're going to answer for going to church. That's where most people get saved, in a church or because of one. We don't worship the building. We, this ain't a monument. Lord, have mercy. This is a place where we come and preach and pray. Hey, how do you have Sunday school in a house church? You can if you try hard, but it's hard. Where, where do you baptize the converts? Uh, where, how do you have church discipline? I mean, there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with a house church, but there's nothing wrong with us meeting in a, under a tent, or there's nothing wrong with us meeting in a tabernacle, and there's nothing wrong with meeting here. You need to be a part of a church, and you will answer to God of how you, what you've done with this church, how you supported it when you deliberately laid out when you should have come, how you've done it. God's checking it off on your record. What have I done with the church? i tell you what you do. You depend on all us to keep it running good so you can come in and get a blessing whenever you choose to. Or somebody wants to get married or dies. Listen, you, every one of you can get mad at me. I, I'm used to it. Amen? Are you listening to me this morning? I'll tell you, boy, I can tell them old looks, them old sour looks like some of y'all got on your face this morning. Listen, what are you done with the church, people? It's a church. This is a church of the living God. This church is more important than any secular activity you might have going on. And if you're not at work or sick or have to do something, then get your family in the house of God. What have I done with the church? A uh, lady came up to old, pre- old mountain preach the other day, and she said, you ought to see you when you preach. And he looked back there and said, you ought to see you when I preach. That's the way some of y'all look this morning. <laughs> Amen. You know, if, if, that's where you have your funeral. Uh, uh, funerals are tough. Weddings are tough. They both have the same spirit. And uh, it's, it, it really is. It's weird. Hey, everybody walks in. This guy preaches the funeral. They, they expect old Uncle, Uncle Joe to live like the devil his whole life. And then when he dies, take him down to church and expect the preacher to get up and tell everybody what a great, wonderful person he was and how he's shouting in heaven. And I hope old Joe made it. But I'm telling you, it don't look good. Uh, uh, for some of them, and, and, and they get mad at it. Well, preacher, Joe took a woman $5 one time. He's in heaven, ain't he? <laughs> I said, I don't know if he is or not. I hope he is. 
said one time this man they had this, this man died and is having his funeral and uh, the preacher got up you done the best you can I mean he talked about what a good man he was and the fine fellow and people were looking at like what and and uh, he kept talking about and finally finally the woman punched the son and said go up there and look and see if that's your daddy in that thing. We messed around and went in the wrong room. <laughs> Just in wrong. I'll tell you this morning, brother, you know where you get that done? The church. The church helps you with your funeral. The church helps you with your weddings. Listen, I, I, I talked to a guy the other day, and I said, uh, you go to church anywhere? He said, no. I said, I read the Bible. I said, I don't go to church. I said, why? You know how people say, ah, I got burnt out on religion. Got this happen. Uh, deacon run off the piano player. That this happened. That, that. You know, they always say some bull like that, you know, and think that makes it all right. They don't go to church, whatever. I'm telling you something. I said, you need to be a part of a good local Bible-believing Bible preaching church and get in there and serve God, brother. Live right. Back up your church with your prayers. Back up your church with your with your presence and back up your church with your pocketbooks and back up your church with what you've got and get in there. What have I done with the church? The church is the most important thing on this earth. People say the family is. No, it ain't. Wouldn't be no family if it wasn't. Jesus ain't coming back after family. Jesus didn't die for family. He died for the church and he's coming back after the church. You better be careful how you treat God's church. You say he made the family before he made the church. Yeah, and, and uh, he made rocks before he made people too. I'm going to tell you something this morning. You're going to answer how you treat the church. Number four, what have I done about prayer? The disciples came to the Lord one time and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Have you ever got down and said, Lord, I'm a terrible prayer. Lord, teach me how to pray. God, just teach me how to pray. Lord, I'm ignorant. I don't even know what to say. Lord, teach me how to pray. The average person this morning is so busy, we get this going. George Miller, the same guy I told you about a while ago, he prayed for five men. He got a burden for five men. He prayed for these five men. He Every day, every day, five men that God would get hold of their heart. He prayed a year and a half, and one of them got saved. He prayed five more years, and another one got saved. He prayed 12 and a half more years, and another one got saved. And he prayed 40 for the last two, and died. I think one of them got saved at his funeral, and another shortly thereafter. You know why? The old man prayed. The old man prayed. You are not wasting your time praying. Ladies, if you got a child, you know what you ought to do when he goes to school? Get in your prayer closet and get down, turn everything off, get down there and say, Lord, take care of my child. God, take care of my school. God, take care of my husband at work. You say, well, Brother Danny, I have to get up and go to work too. Get up a little bit earlier, get in the prayer closet, get down and say, God, I commit my life to you today. Put a hedge around my kids, watch over them. I do that every morning, every morning of my life. 365 days a year, I get up and I read that book. I'm nothing. I'm a sorry Christian. That's why I need to do it so bad. And I get down and I say, Lord, and I pray for my girls. I pray for the, all the family. And I pray, God, please, 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 help them, God, help them. Listen, what have you done with prayer? What have you done with prayer? What have you done with your prayer life this morning? Amen. What have you done with prayer? Said this old boy years ago, they was in the war and they somewhere over yonder and, and the United States conquered this, got took this piece of land. And they said, All right. They said, Now boys, said we're still on enemy territory around here and they're shooting at us. But he said, We've claimed this piece of land over here, and we need somebody who's brave enough to take the American flag and take it up and put it on the pole. And one old, nobody would do it. I ain't going up there, man. I'm a target. They'll shoot me off that thing. And one old boy from Arkansas, down there in the country, jumped up and he ran to his commander and he said, in 20 minutes, I'll take the flag. Everybody looked at him sort of weird like that. Like, what's he talking about? He said, all right. And he sat down over there. And he said, a few minutes went by, 20 minutes went by, and he said, all right, give me the flag. He took the American flag folded it, put it under his arm, and took up off that, that flagpole. And everybody was just going like this. I can't watch. Bullets going on all sides of him. I ain't going like that, you know. And sure enough, he hung that flag, came down, 
come back over there. They cheered. They clapped. He was a hero. They said, man, you got guts. I'm telling you. He said, what? I said, but let me ask you one thing. What's that 20 minute? Why did you make us wait 20 minutes? And he said, I'll tell you why. He said, my mama. He said, my old mama back in Arkansas. He said, she loves God. She's a prayer warrior. He said, my mama prays for me. And mama told me she'd be praying for me every day on her knees at 4 o'clock. And he said, right at just about 4 o'clock Arkansas time right now. And I knew nothing couldn't happen to me when my mama praying. And I'm telling you this morning, folks, that same God is still God today that can take care of your child and my, ki- my kids and my grandkids. He can take care of your family. He can take care of your home. He can take care of your health. You've got to pray. What have you done with your prayer life? Number five, what have I done with my money? What have I done with my money? You know what old Rockefeller said? One of the richest, most famous millionaires the world's ever seen? Rockefeller said, the poorest man I know is the man that ain't got nothing but money. The poorest man I know is the man that has nothing but money. When I first got saved, they said, now, Danny, you go join the church. I said, all right, join the church. They said, Danny, get baptized. I got baptized. They said, now, Danny, pay your tithes. I said, what's that? They said, it's 10% of what you make. I said, okay, I've done it then. I do it now. I do it more than that now. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you. I ain't preaching you to do something I don't do myself. And I'm telling you, I put it in. And if you, these people sitting right here this morning, you say, well, I've just never got to that point yet. Now, listen, if you can trust God, you, you do understand that your help is in God's hand. You understand your home, your kid, everything. He calls the shots here. If you can't trust Him with your money, how are you going to trust Him to get you out of here and take you to heaven one these days without let me tell you something God in his power is able to put his blessing on 90% of your money and make it go further and last longer than he is 100% with a curse of God on hey if you ain't doing that start today start today it's I know I know it's Old Testament I understand that I know it's what Jesus said about the tithe I know what he said a New Testament Christian under grace ought to give twice more than an Old Testament Jew under the law and I'm telling you this morning ladies and gentlemen what have I done with my money Money can't buy health. Money can't buy a digestive system. You can buy good food. But you can't, money can't help you digest it. Money can't buy you long life. And money can't buy you heaven. The other day I was preaching, and it was on the Internet, I reckon I was preaching about one of our missionaries, Nathan and Teresa, over in, over in uh, uh, Bulgaria and Ukraine, a place over there where they, where they preach and been doing it for years. And a man in Alabama heard me preaching. He called me. He said, Danny, he said, when you was preaching about that, God spoke to my heart. And he said, I heard you talking about Nathan over there the, on the mission field. And he said, I heard you talking about your bus kids. And you know what he said? He said, God spoke to me and said, give them people some money. And he said, starting August the 1st, I'll be sending you a check every month for $100 he said, you add 50 to what y'all already give Nathan and put 50 on that bus ministry. I said, hallelujah. I just got, we just got the first check the other day. I think I, I don't know if I put it in here this morning. I've just got it the other day. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. That man's smart with his money. Do you realize God in heaven looks down on that and says, huh, I'll bless you over here. Now, that ain't why you do it. But God's able to make his car last longer. God's able to make his health do better. I'm not saying you do it for that reason. I'm just saying you better remember when you start stealing God's money and wasting it on yourself, what have I done with my money? What have I done? It's questions people never ask. What have I done with my money, people? What have I done with my money? What have I done with it? Happiness is a small window between having too much money and not enough. Not enough will make you miserable. Having too much will make you miserable. You're happy right in there between somewhere and honor God and do right. I hope all of you get rich and make a million dollars. Just honor God and put Him first. It's funny It's funny that people make $100 a week, don't have no problem giving, and people that make 5000 a week can't. You know why? You get greedy. You want to hold on to it. Just remember this. God's the one that gave that to you. And if you'll honor Him and put Him first, He'll put more blessings on top of that. Number six. What have I done about soul winning? 
what have I done about soul winning? You're going to ask yourself this one of these days. You're going to ask yourself, the people you meet, buses. And we hit one yesterday, boy. Some of you know her. I've been to this woman's house before. I ain't been before. I knocked on the door. I heard her coming down, all talking. I sort of backed off like this. Had him and another guy with me. And the door was right here, and I said, if she comes out with a gun, she'll shoot them. That's honestly what I thought. You say, preacher, you let them... Well, it's every man for himself, brother, when you're out there pulling guns. And, 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 the, and the doors are, And I backed up like this. I thought, if she comes out with a gun, because I've, I've had stuff like that happen before. One night, I come around, me and a deacon went visiting one time, and this guy stepped right behind the house and shattered, held a rifle at us, just like that right there. I, just went, I fell on the ground just like that. Before I could even think, and he said, ah, oh, just joking, he's just cutting up with us. And, uh, uh, and my deacon said, you was going to let him shoot me. I said, well, I wasn't going to let him shoot me. <laughs> so anyway, here she comes. She comes down the hall, boom, 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 and slammed the door and said, get off my property! Blam! Slammed that door. I thought I was going to tear her hands off. And then she opened it back up and said, If you ever come back here again, I'm going to call the law. Bam! Slammed it again. And the guy that was with us, he had never been on bus visitation before and he went. That's good for you. That's good for you. That's real good for you. Everybody ought to have that. You ought to get cussed out once in a while. You, ought, you bunch of sissies that are afraid to give somebody a track because they might turn it down. It's good for you to get cussed out once in a while. Good for you. You need to know how the devil in the world feels about the gospel. We're going to ask ourselves, what have we done about soul winning? The house that Kelly, my wife, went to yesterday. So sad. So sad. Wife shaking like this. Husband, who knows where. Kids out in the yard playing, burning up. I'm telling you, this morning, one day, when we look back, we'll be glad that we went and knocked on somebody's door and told them how to get saved. What have you done with soul winning? Number seven, I'm through. What have you done with God's warnings? You see, the Lord's warning you. Here's the Lord warning you today. It's appointed unto man wants to die. Now, I'm just a man and I'm speaking it, but it's His warning. It's appointed a man wants to die. You are going to die. I am going. It's not if, it's when. The only, the only way you're going to escape dying is the Lord would come and get us in our lifetime. Other than that, 100% chance you're all going to die. What have you done with that warning? Are you ready? Are you ready? There's a man in the Bible one time, he said, I'm going to tear down this house, build me another house, I'm going to do this, put more in it. And God said, thou fool, tonight I'm going to take your soul. You're going to die tonight, dude. You're dying today. And who's all this stuff going to be? You're going to be dead today. Now, I don't know if you're going to be dead today or not. I might be. This might be my last sermon. This might be your life. If you're smart this morning, you're going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, what have I done with God's warnings? I'm going to make sure I'm right before I walk out that door this morning. I'm not leaving this church house until I know that my sins are gone and I'm right with God. Ladies and gentlemen, what have you done with God's warnings about sin? What have you done with God's warnings about sin? I mentioned drugs a while ago. Listen, if you're sneaking around taking drugs or you're shooting up or snorting or you're on meth, and I get you say, listen, I can handle it. I can handle this. I can handle this. I can handle You can't handle it. I can't handle it. Nobody can handle it. God's warning you. He's warning you. He's warning you. You say, well, Brother Danny, the temptation is so strong. I understand that. I, I, don't, I don't have, I don't know what that's like, but I believe you. I believe that. I know how temptation is. Temptation can pull on you. It can work on you. I, some, somebody told me just this week, yesterday, we saw another man. We was talking to him. He said, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I've got off drugs. I've went in to uh, finish the program. He said, I don't drink no more. But he said, I fight it every day. Every day. Listen, you've got to fight it every day. If you're here this morning and somebody's talking to you, 
you're not married to. And you like it. And you think it's okay. And you, you ain't really done nothing yet. But y'all been talking on the phone. Or she's been flirting with you at work. Or something. And the temptation is there to cheat on your husband or your wife. What are you going to do with God warning you this morning? I'm not God, but I'm telling you, He said, Be sure your sin will find you out. You better stay away from that person. You better delete their number. You better not answer their calls. I'm telling you, if you don't starve it, it'll get you. I know, I know somebody that was messing around one time. They hadn't really done nothing. They just met and talked to somebody they wasn't married to. And the preacher got up and gave him a strong warning. He didn't know it, just like I'm doing this morning. I don't know. I don't know anybody in here is doing that. And they didn't listen. And it wasn't long after that until it blowed out and destroyed the marriage and destroyed the, the, uh, the lives of a lot of people. What have you done with God's warnings? He's warning you this morning. Get it under the blood. Get it right. I ain't talking to her no more. I ain't answering her calls. I'm not going where she works. I'm not going to listen to him. If he comes, I'm going the other way. I'm going to quit sitting here. I'm not going to let it. You say, well, I, I just love that feeling. Yeah, you love that feeling. That's a devil putting the, the, the bait out there on the hook, and you're too dumb to see the hook that's inside there. He'll get you. God's warning says, be sure your sin will find you out. You know how people say, well, preacher, pray for me. I got a court date coming up, August 20th. Got a court date, and you know that date's coming? Well, guess what? Your day's coming. You got a court date, and you're going to stand before God, and you're going to ask yourself these questions. What have I done? What have I done? I'm going to ask you a question this morning. You want to get this right before we leave here today? Get this. That's what you come to church for, to get help, right? You want, that's what you want me to do, help you? Okay, I'm going to help you right now. Let's get this thing right before we leave today. He said, I don't want to. Okay. You're going to ask yourself a question one day. What do I do with God's warning? You'll pay. It ain't worth it. It is not worth it. What have I done? Let's stand by here.